said, just want to do a quick uh, introduction to this video. This is a, as I say in the video, it's been almost a year since I've done the video, 11 months. And I guess I forgot a couple of things. And one of them is I was recording into the mic of my iPhone XS, which in the video, as you'll see, is, is over here. And so when I was looking at this camera, my iPhone 6S Plus, my voice wasn't going right into the microphone. When I turn and talk to that, you'll see the audio gets better. But in either case, the audio is bad in this room, uh, and I just completely forgot to do that. I'm also using a program called OBS. It's Open Broadcaster Software. The first time I created a video for a YouTube video using it, and it's not the greatest, but it's it allows me to use this new device I got and uh, and make recordings. So I just wanted to, to, I decided to leave the video the way it is as an illustration of, again, what not to do. And uh, I promise in the future I'll, I'll use a better mic situa situation and um, see what else I can do to improve the quality. Thank you very much, and now let's let's watch the video. Hello, and welcome to my May 11th, creating photos and videos. But it's it's been almost a year since I've done a video in this series, and um, I can't really explain what happened last summer and fall that prevented me from doing. That nothing really prevented me from doing videos. I just didn't do them. I think perhaps a lot of it had to do with my change in focus. I really had become interested in sketching. I had been drawing portraits, and I pretty much was satisfied with my success by June, and I turned my attention to something called urban sketching. Urban sketching is a phenomenon that's worldwide, and it basically dictates to artists who want to participate to begin a sketch and finish it by watercolor painting it on location. So you go downtown, sit on the sidewalk, sketch something, paint it, and you have to carry all your materials with you, maybe something to sit on. That's urban sketching. And so that's what really got my attention, and I wanted to improve my sketching skills. So there's where my focus went, from doing videos and fooling around with photography to sketching. So for that, I apologize to those of you who had subscribed to me because you were interested in the content that I was providing. And just as a refresher, that content was mostly uh, videos that I was doing on my photography, related to photography, making photographs and so on, and, but mostly on my whole for, foray into video uh, making and the tools that I was using, the equipment that I was purchasing and trying out or experimenting with, as well as the software such as the Cinemaker multi-camera app that's available for iOS, so really very cool app. And by the way, I'm not using that today, but I've got to explain to you a little bit later what I am using. So back to the urban sketching, I, I, I really got interested in, in improving my own sketching and I felt fairly comfortable with that. And by, by uh, the end of the year, I decided, just as I do with most things that I teach myself or that I learn through others, I want to teach people how to do this. I wanted to try to build up a, a community of fellow artists in, the, in my local area, Lynchburg, Virginia, who would be interested in joining me downtown on the streets and drawing the buildings of Lynchburg or landmarks in Lynchburg, anything like that. And so uh, I established a class that met in uh, our dining room. Uh, I limited it to four people. It was really meant to be a very uh, one almost kind of uh, experience. And I provided everybody with all their materials. And so I had this class scheduled for March, but then of course this COVID-19 pandemic Kind of put the kibosh on that and uh, I like many people decide well maybe I can teach this class online and again like many people I turned to Zoom to do that. So I started experimenting with Zoom and fortunately our daughter and our daughter-in-law both are now Zoom experts because they, our daughter works at home in, in her business and our daughter-in-law is having to work from home now. But what I wanted to be able to do in a class is I wanted to have, and again, it was going to be limited. And I, only had to, I only had three people signed up at this class in March. What I wanted to be able to do was to be able to have my face, so that they would see me. I'd be part of the Zoom meeting or the Zoom class. And I wanted uh, them also to be able to see my workspace. 
And so where I was drawing or demonstrating or showing books or showing palettes, showing paint, you know, a variety of things. So I needed a way to have a camera on me and a camera on my workspace. And the way I solved that, because I didn't have any other solution, is I would, uh, I connected a webcam. I have a Logitech C920 webcam. I attached that to a tripod that overhangs my desk here and, uh, or a drawing table rather. And then I attached it to my MacBook Pro and I initiated the Zoom class meeting with that account, with that login rather. And then I logged myself in using my iPhone and the iPhone was on me just as it is right now. And so I had two windows in the Zoom gallery, if you will, one of me and one of our workspace so that the students could see whatever I was doing on the workspace, but they could also see me talking. And that, that worked out fine. And actually the class was quite successful. The people were very happy. They were helping me learn something. I didn't charge them for the class. And we all came away with uh, some new learning in different ways, but uh, with a good experience. However, though it worked fine, I really wanted to use my Panasonic GX85, a, a real a mirrorless camera that sends out clean HDMI, meaning it doesn't have any of the controls over the screen. And by controls, what I mean is if I, if I click on my iPhone screen, now you can see all the controls from Filmic Pro, but I can turn that off. So this is not clean, not clean HDMI, and this is. There's no, there, you see no other controls, you only see me, you see the room I'm in, uh, I've got lights on me because I've got the, I have no choice but in this window to have windows behind me since three of the walls in this room are windows. So I wanted to be able to use my uh, Panasonic camera as uh, a, a camera on my workspace to give me really good, good quality video from that. As I'd be painting, I'd be drawing, and I wanted that to be really good. However, in order to do that, I need to have a converter that would allow me to connect an HDMI cable from my camera into my computer so that the computer would pick up the signal that was coming from the camera. And what you need is uh, an HDMI converter, so I started looking. And the, the one I heard the most about was an Elgato uh, CamLink device, which was like $135 or something like that. Not cheap, but uh, it would serve the purpose and it would let me have one camera connected, a, a regular camera connected to my computer. But they were sold out. It, it appears that a lot of people had this idea of going online with their cameras instead of just using the webcam that's on the top of your computer or the, the camera that's on the top of your computer or even the camera from your smartphone. But, uh, I, so I started looking for alternatives. Then there was another one that was really, looked like it would be pr promising. It was $299, so more than twice the price, and it was sold out. And that started me looking at all the alternatives, and one of those was from Blackmagic Design, an Australian company, I understand, who makes uh, ATEMs, ATEMs, and I don't know what that stands for, but it has to, it, it has to do with the broadcasting industry, and, and uh, it's a switcher of sorts. So this is a, was a new product back in, I think, October, November, the A10 Mini, and it only sold for $295. Now, only is still expensive, $4 cheaper than that other device I was looking at, but thousands of dollars less than it's, it's at the time, biggest brother, you know, next biggest or oldest brother. So uh, it was a really, and what made it different from the uh, cam link or the other device I looked at is I could connect up to four input devices. So I could have four cameras using those and not just in this kind of a scenario where I'm teaching a class, but I could use it just as I did with uh, Cinemaker. It just seemed to make sense to get that instead of getting one, a device that would only let me connect one camera. So they were sold out. And I looked everywhere. I checked every retailer in the United States, and there were none. So I figured I'd better get myself on a waiting list. I did that. I went up to Adorama, the New York camera store or electronics store, and uh, ordered one. And five weeks later, about two weeks ago, I got it. And so that's what I'm using now. I'm not going to go into how it works and everything. I'll save that for a, a, another video, perhaps next week. And uh, it is quite fascinating what you can do with this. And basically, it, it, just like with Cinemaker, it, it puts a, 
uh, TV control room almost in, at my fingertips. So I can, as you can see, switch between that camera over there, my iPhone XS, and the camera that's right in front of me, my iPhone 6S Plus. But I can do more than that. I can switch to a, to my Panasonic camera and have it look at my uh, desk so you can see it. I can have uh, a slideshow from my iPad Pro coming in as well. And just be, I have four buttons, boom, 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 boom. And I can do a lot of other things with that. These are very cool and exciting improvements in my setup and uh, have gotten me back into doing videos. Uh, I want to do more of these videos for uh, creating photos and videos. And I also have started a series on uh, not surprisingly, on art, uh, and, and it's sketching and painting with Bill. So check those out if you have any interest in that. And uh, if, hey, by the way, if you're interested in my class, you can go to the website. There'll be a, a link in the description. There'll be a link on the screen when this, is, uh, when this rolls out. But again, I want to thank you very much for sticking with me and uh, helping me raise my numbers. If you've not subscribed to me before, please do. It always helps. And uh, I look forward to continuing the conversation about uh, ways to use a device like an AT Mini. But not just that, but the other things that I do as well. So lots of topics to cover, lots of things to talk about. And I look forward to doing that with you in the near future. Next Monday, probably. Thanks very much for checking in. Goodbye.